And Manchester City looking to reassert their dominance at the top of the table. But the big news is Big Sam is back in a managerial position. Although, in this game, are predicting a big win for Manchester City despite the arrival of Allardyce. Why no new manager bounce, Stevie? <laughs> Have you seen the scores of the Leeds have had recently? <laughs> this team has no clue how to defend. And as good as Sam organises his defence, well, sorry, not his defence, his whole team, because that's what's going to happen, they're going to have 11 men behind the ball, 100%. It's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. And they're going to have to try and get out as well and try and take the pressure off themselves. Because they can't take pressure from the first and the 90th against a Man City side who not only have Haaland, but have goals everywhere. So, yeah, I don't see Leeds having a hope. Kieran, you've actually played under Sam Allardyce at West Brom. What did you make of this appointment? Yeah, Big Sam. I actually like Big Sam. Obviously, he's a completely different style to what I had for so long. Um, but it makes sense what, what he tries to do. Um, you, you know what you're going to get with him straight away. Um, it's about it's just about getting everyone to buy into it. He's a pure numbers man. Um, he's big on regains, second balls, you know, areas of the pitch that you need to get the ball in. Um, he's not interested in passes. He's not interested in possession. Um, he'll sit you down before the game and he'll say you need to get the ball into this area of the pitch, in the box, to have a chance of scoring. Um, and then after the game, if you haven't hit all of these targets, he'll say, well, this is, this is why you didn't score or this is why you didn't win the game. Um, so he's, like, he's very pragmatic. Um, and he's just, for him, it's just about time to try and get the players to buy into it. Because I feel like when he was at West Brom, it took him a while and he just didn't have enough time in the end. But I felt like the boys started to buy into it and he started to pick up the results. Um, so I think, he's, I think it might be a bit too short. Uh, short time into just get the boys to buy into to what he wants to do. Yeah, he truly is the definition of no nonsense, but he feels that he is up there in terms of managers with the likes of Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola. He said, I'm 68, but there's nobody ahead of me in football terms, not Pep, not Klopp, not Arteta. Kieran, what did you think of him saying this? <laughs> I like that from Sam because that's just what you get with him all the time. Like, he's that kind of guy. Um, so, no, I respect it. Listen, he's he's made a good career out of what he's done. It's, uh, it's The numbers are all there. Um, the stats are all there. He's he done brilliantly at Bolton, um, West Ham. He's... Um, He's he's a really interesting character and he's he's very confident in in you know his belief system and of how the game should be played. It's obviously just so different to you know kind of what we call the modern day of football now, but um, it's worked for him and it it gave him a, a a decent career. So you know we'll see we'll see if his his tactics work in um, in the modern day now. Going back to what Stevie was saying, Frank, it really could be a scary afternoon for the Leeds defence, regardless of who plays, whoever Pep Guardiola puts out in this front line. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if um, uh, Pep decides to rotate uh, some players and, uh, and, and rest uh, some others, uh, because they're on fire right now and they are facing the team who, uh, as Stevie said, uh, cannot defend and uh, has to concede goals. So Sam is a magician. But I don't think he, 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 he had the time to uh, boil the magical soup for the, uh, the players to, uh, to drink it and be ready for it. It takes time to boil it and, uh, and I think it's going to take time for, for the players to change their mind and, and accept the decision of, uh, of Sam's. So um, I think it's too early and especially too strong in front of them to cope with the situation. Manchester City is on fire. They are on, the, on, the, on their mood to, uh, to win the, the Premier League. And it's not Leeds and Sam Allardyce which, uh, which can stop him, them. It's impossible what, for me. What flavours the soup, Frank? <laughs> oh, it's a, mixed, uh, it's a mix of onion, uh, basil maybe, and a little bit of chorizo because Pep is, uh, is Spanish. <laughs> Shaka, here's a look at the uh, here's a look at the remaining schedule for both of the teams right now. What stands out to you? Uh, that Arsenal have to have to go perfect between now and the end of the season. Uh, Newcastle and, and then Brighton. I, I don't see Forest and Wolves be an issue for them. For for City, 
Um, I, again, I, the thing with me for City is is, is still the, the number of games to play. Include two games against Real Madrid in there. Um, and But City have spent the most, have the biggest squad in, in the Premier League uh, and, and are built for, for exactly this. You just wonder if that number of games catches up with them. Which is why maybe we're already seeing him say there's going to be rotations. Well, there, there has to be between now and the end of the season. And, and that's kind of born of success, you know, um, where when you're a club like City and you compete in every single competition, go as deep in every single competition as you do, uh, you end up with this fixture congestion. And, and surely by now, City recognise that and, and Guardiola, given his experiences in, in English football, understands that, that he has to rotate. Um, the thing is, uh, with Arsenal, uh, and, and uh, again, uh, being as good as they are and, and determined to chase them all the way to the end of the season, how much can you afford to rotate? How do you, I, I don't think City can afford to drop too many points between here and the end, end of the season. And they're a club that are still, I, I think the, the Champions League is, is their holy grail. So maybe all those things come into to head at once, um, gives them reason to pause at, at, at the very least. But all that is for nothing if, if Arsenal don't go perfect. Because I, I think it will take Arsenal going perfect between now and the end of the season to, to overcome uh, Manchester City. Why are you saying? When he said that. No, I'm just I'm thinking of the, the, this, this game tomorrow with Newcastle and Arsenal is huge for the Premier League. Because if Newcastle beat or draw with Arsenal, Man City can afford to lose two games between now and the end of the season and still win the title. That's how important this game is. And that means that Leeds, Everton and Chelsea, that's who City have to beat to win the league if Arsenal don't win against Newcastle. Now, is anybody putting any money on Leeds, Everton and Chelsea to beat Man City or take points off them? Not nobody. So this, this is huge and it, it would do City a huge favour because then, mm -hmm. then, even with all kinds of rotation, they're still beating those three I mentioned and that means that Brentford and... Who was the last one? Brighton, was it? Brentford and... Well, uh, again, yeah, they it, have, it won't and, matter. And Brighton, yeah. It won't matter. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on U2. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.